let's look at multiplying polynomials together. And we have to remember when we multiply polynomials, the rules for multiplying the same base with exponents. Remember, when we multiply uh, numbers that have the same base but an exponent, we add the exponents. Example 1 is 9t to the power of 6 times a negative 3t to the power of 5. Well, first we'll multiply the coefficients. 9 times negative 3 is a negative 27. And then we're going to say t to the power of 6 times t to the power of 5 by adding the exponents. And that would give us t to the 11th. So our final term is negative 27t to the 11th. Example 2, we do the same thing. Negative 5.2 <coughs> excuse me, times 3 is going to give us a negative 15.6. Then I say x to the 4th times x to the 3rd. By adding the exponents, I get x to the 7th. When I have fractions, I, num I multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. This is a negative 3 fourths times a positive 1 seventh. So my answer will be negative. 3 times 1 is 3. 4 times 7 is 28. Now let's look at the variables. y to the 7th times y to the 4th. Once again, we add those exponents and we get y to the 11th. When we have three terms to multiply together, as an example 4, we have to remember that the coefficient of a variable that doesn't have one is a 1. So what we're saying is 1 times 5 is 5. 5 times negative 6, the coefficient is going to be negative 30. Then I'm multiplying an x, uh, x values, x variables, and this one, the first one, x, has no exponent. It's understood to be an exponent of 1. So x to the power of 1 times x to the 4th is 1 plus 4, or 5. And I say that times x to the 7th would be 5 plus 7, or I'm going to have x to the power of 12. Example 5, we have to distribute multiplication. In other words, we've got to multiply this first term times each term inside the parentheses. I'm going to say 2x times 6x would give me 12x squared. And 2x times a 3 is going to give me a plus 6x. Let's look at what happens when we're multiplying times three different terms inside parentheses. We distribute multiplication. We have to do three multiplications. So we're going to say negative 4b squared times 3b cubed. It would be a negative 12. And let's do the variables, b squared times b cubed, b to the power of 5. The next term, negative 4b squared times negative 12b squared, would be a positive 48. b squared times b squared, b to the fourth. And the third one, negative 4b squared times negative 6 is going to give us a positive 24. We have no b's to multiply. We just have to carry forward our b squared. Example 7 is a special uh, couple of polynomials. It's a binomial times a binomial. And you probably remember from learning this before that we multiply those with a method known as FOIL. First, outside, inside, and last terms. So we start with multiplying the first terms. This uh, x and x are the first terms of each binomial. So we would say this is the first term. So we would say x times x, and that gives us x squared. And then we're going to multiply outside terms. We're going to say x times 9. Those are the outside terms. x times 9 would give us 9x. Inside terms, 2 times x is going to give us 2x. And finally, last terms, 2 times 9 plus 18. Now, when we use FOIL, we don't miss anything. We have to do four multiplications. Then we combine like terms, and our like terms are sitting right here in the middle. So we just have to combine the 9x and the 2x. It gives us 11x, and we end up with a trinomial. Let's try FOILing example 8. First terms, we would multiply 4x times 3x, and we would have 12x squared. Outside, 4x times negative 5, it is a negative 20x. Inside, negative 3 times 3x, negative 9x. And last terms, negative 3 times negative 5, positive 15. Once again, our like terms are right here in the center. We'll combine terms. We'll have 12x squared minus 29x plus 15. Now what happens? 
In example 9, when we have to multiply a binomial times a trinomial, well, FOIL will no longer work for us. What we're going to have to do is take each of the two binomial terms and multiply it by each of the three trinomial terms. So we're going to be doing six multiplications and then combining like terms. Let's see if we can write it here for you. We say x times x cubed. First, that will give us x to the power of 4. Then we would say x times negative 3x. It will give us a negative 3x squared. And we would say x times a positive 4. That's going to give us a positive 4x. We're finished with multiplying by x. Let's multiply by the 5. 5 times x cubed is going to give us a positive 5x cubed. 5 times negative 3x is negative 15x. And 5 times the 4 will give us a positive 20. If we want to combine like terms, the best way for us to do it is to start with the highest exponent. The highest exponent is the x to the fourth. I see no other x to the fourth, so I'll just write it down. The next highest exponent would be x to the third, and I only see one term that has x to the third. The next highest exponent would be x squared. There's only one of those also, negative 3x squared. I finally get to some terms I can combine, 4x minus 15x would give me a negative 11x, and the final term, plus 20, and I end up with a polynomial with five terms, and the degree of this polynomial is 4 because the highest exponent is a 4. Example number 10 tells us we want to take x plus 2 and cube it. In other words, we're going to be multiplying. The problem is really x plus 2, a binomial, times another binomial, x plus 2, times another binomial, x plus 2. Well, there's no way to do this in one step. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the last two binomials and we're going to FOIL them. And then we'll have a trinomial that will multiply times the first binomial. Let's just remember to carry down that first binomial as we work. I'm going to move over here so I have room. So I have x plus 2. And I'm going to FOIL the second two, uh, two binomials. x times x would give me x squared. And outside terms, x times 2 would give me 2x. Inside terms, 2 times x would give me 2x. And last terms, 2 times 2 would give me 4. Now before I go any further, I need to combine these like terms. My first binomial just still stays the same. But I can combine 2x plus 2x in the center of my second polynomial. And I get 4x plus 4. Now the problem now is the same as example number 9. It is a binomial times a trinomial, so I'm going to start over basically and start multiplying. I'm going to say x times x squared. This time is going to give me, let's see if I can write it over here, x cubed. Then I say x times 4x is 4x squared. And I say x times 4 is 4x. I'll multiply everything times the 2 by saying 2 times x squared. Well, I think I'll write that under my x squared terms is 2x squared. 2 times 4x is going to give me 8x. And 2 times 4 would just give me 8. Now, I've written the terms on top of each other so I can easily see what can be combined. And I add my terms together. And it didn't have a plus sign, but it was a plus because it didn't have a minus. And I have a four-term polynomial with the highest degree of 3. Now let's take a look now at example 11 and take it one step further, a trinomial times a trinomial. Well, as you can imagine, we're going to have to multiply each of the terms in the trinomial times each of the terms in the second trinomial. And we're going to be multiplying a lot, and then we're going to combine like terms. So I'm going to stack them on top of each other so I can see which terms are alike easier. And I'll start by multiplying x squared times 2x squared for 2x to the power of 4. x squared times a negative 7x is negative 7x cubed. And x squared times a negative 9 is a negative 9x squared. Well, I'm finished with that one. Let's take the 5x and multiply it times each of the 3 in the second polynomial. 5x times 2x squared is going to give me a positive 10x cubed. 5x times a negative 7x is going to give me a negative 35x squared. And 5x times a negative 9 
is going to give me a negative 45x. And finally, I'll multiply the second polynomial times the negative 7. Negative 7 times 2x squared is going to give me a negative 14x squared. I'm going to write these under the x squared terms. Negative 7 times a negative 7x is a negative 49x. And then finally, negative 7 times negative 9 is going to be a positive 63. You can see I have a lot of terms to combine, but some of them don't have any matching terms, so 63 is alone. Negative 45 minus 49x, I have to add those together, and I get negative 94x. I'm going to add my x squares next, and they're all negative, so really I'm just going to add them together. I may have to move over here to do that. I say 9 plus 35, or 35 plus 9, is going to give me 44. And then I'm going to add 14 to that, and I'll have 58, negative 58 x squared. And then I say negative 7x cubed, positive 10x cubed. That's going to give me a positive 3x cubed. And I have nothing to combine with my 2x to the power of 4. So I ended up with five terms. The highest degree is a degree of 4.